Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared equals x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we're going to solve for f of x. In other words, we're going to try to find an expression for f of x in terms of x. And I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So I want this whole thing inside the parentheses to be another variable, like t maybe. You can also use u, it doesn't matter, anything is fine, as long as you don't use x, okay? Now, what does this entail? If you set x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared to t, basically your goal is, by setting this whole thing equal to t, your goal is to solve for x in terms of t, and then substitute that here. So we're going to solve for x, and then substitute that here, okay? So that we can get an expression in terms of t. In other words, from the x world, we're going to go to the t world. To do that, we can approach this equation in different ways, which is what I'm going to do. First, we can go ahead and actually isolate the radical, right? Let's do that. So we're going to subtract x from both sides. And the reason behind that is we want to get rid of the radical. That's a good motivation, right? Let's go ahead and square both sides. That will eliminate the radical. 1 minus x squared equals t squared minus 2tx, 2t or not 2t if you're a tutor, plus x squared. Now, x squared or x did not disappear. That's perfectly fine. It doesn't always do. But since we're trying to solve for x, remember that all the time. Let's put all the x terms on the right-hand side. Actually, everything on the right-hand side. But notice that I can go ahead and bring this over to the right, and that'll give us 2x squared. And then we'll have 2tx plus t squared. And then finally, minus 1 equals 0. Notice that this equation is quadratic in x. Yes, it's quadratic in t as well, but we don't care because we're trying to solve for x. Make sense? So let's go ahead and solve this equation for x so that we can substitute. So I'm going to use a quadratic formula because that's the easiest. This is not easily factorable. You can also try completing the square, but I think quadratic formula will do fine. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4t squared, minus 4 times a times c. In this case, we have a, uh, a that's different from 1, so I'm going to write it down. Divide by 2a, which is 4. Awesome. At this point, we can actually go ahead and simplify this inside the radical first. That's going to give me, let me write it down here, 4t squared minus 8t squared plus 8. So in other words, inside the radical, we have 8 minus 4t squared. And all of that is divided by 4. Now, notice that we can factor out a 4 here. So 2t plus minus. And that 4 can be written as 2 on the outside. Since we divided by 4, it's going to be 2 minus t squared. And all of that is divided by 4. Now, we can divide the numerator and the denominator by 2, not by 4. That gives us t plus minus the square root of t minus t squared divided by 2. So there's something interesting about the first method, by the way. You're going to realize when we substitute this, something interesting is going to happen. Maybe it's not that interesting, but I, I find it interesting. You let me know what you think. So we have two solutions. Which one should we use? I think both solutions should work fine. That was at least ideally, right? So I want to go with the positive one, maybe. Let's use this one. And you can go ahead and try the other one, because we don't really need to do that. It should be similar, right? Uh, please do and let, let us know what you find. But I'm going to go ahead and use the one with the plus sign. Okay, the top one. So this is our x in terms of t, which is good. Now, should we substitute that on the left-hand side? Let me rewrite the equation. We have f of x plus square root of 1 minus x squared equals x times square root of 1 minus x squared. This is what I got for x, so should I really substitute that? I mean, you can. You can go ahead and replace it here. So that should give us something like t plus the square root of t, 2 minus t squared over 2, plus the square root of 1 minus 
t plus the square root of 2 minus t squared over 2. But this is x, so this should be squared and put under the radical because that's what we have here, right? Following this. So that should be f of something, the giant parentheses, right? So this, and then we do the same thing on the right-hand side. But wait a minute. Didn't we find this x value by setting the whole thing inside the parentheses equal to t? Yes. So eventually, this should become t, right? It's supposed to be t. But does it become t? You can go ahead and check out. But on the right-hand side, we should get the product. So it should look like this, t plus the square root of t minus, the square root of 2 minus t squared over 2 times, this time we're going to just multiply by uh, the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is, ta da 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 okay, which is 1 minus x squared, where is 1 minus x squared? Oh, here we go, yeah. This is going to be the radical 1 minus this, right? There we go. That should be a t, be careful about that. And divide by 2, and you're going to square this and subtract from 1, and then take the square root. Yes. So it's like x times square root of 1 minus x squared. Make sense? So when I simplify this, I should be getting something nicer. But what is that going to look like? Let's go ahead and take the expression inside the radical. This is where interesting stuff happens. And hopefully you're going to help me clarify this, because this is kind of mind-boggling a little bit. Uh, we're going to square the top the numerator, and divide it by 4. And then we're going to go ahead and make a common denominator and subtract this. Let's go ahead and write that inside the parentheses. t squared plus 2 minus t squared plus 2t times the square root of 2 minus t squared. So basically, I use the formula a squared plus b squared plus 2ab for the perfect square. And all of that is divided by 4. And this is just the expression inside the radical. It's not the whole thing. So, But I want to simplify that piece first before I can get to anything else. Okay, because that's going to help me, right? Obviously. So t squared cancels out, leaving us with something a little better. 4 minus 2 is a 2. So that's going to be 2 minus 2t two multiplied by square root of 2 minus t squared all over 4. Again, we can divide everything by... 2, and that gives us 1 minus t times the square root of 2 minus t squared divided by 2. Now, you got to remember, this expression is inside the radical. So, this is what a f of t should look like, right? We have, for f of t, we have t plus, do we have another term? No, we just have the square root of t minus 2 minus t squared divided by 2 multiplied by you got to remember that's the uh, that's under the radical, so it's going to be like the square root of 1 minus t times the square root of t minus t squared over 2. So that should be f of t. If you replace t with x, it's not the same x, by the way. You should be getting an expression for f of x. But the million dollar question, this is where I got stuck. Can you simplify this? But before you attempt it, let me show you the second method so that you can go back and see what you're going to be looking for, okay? That's important to know because if you know the end result, you can check your work. Great. So let's go ahead and rewrite the problem. f of x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared equals x times the square root of 1 minus x. Sorry. I kind of tried to mislead you with the first method because that's the whole purpose, right? Uh, and I didn't show you the shortcut here. Obviously, there's a shortcut. When you replace uh, this with something like t, let's go ahead and do this. You don't have to isolate the radical, and you shouldn't. You know why? Because if you don't, you're going to be in better shape. Look at this. If you just square this without isolating the radical, yes, it's going to look a little messy, but take a look at this. You're going to go ahead and square the first term, square the second term, like a squared, b squared, and then 2ab, you're going to get this, right? And that'll be t squared. Of course, x squared cancels out nicely, and we end up with 1 plus 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared equals t squared. Here, my goal is to solve for this. You know why? Because it appears on the right-hand side. That's the very reason, exactly. So let's go ahead and isolate it. Subtract 1 from both sides, right? If you subtract 1, you get that. Divide both sides by 2, and you're done. Easy. So that is equal to this, which means on the left-hand side, I have f of t. On the right-hand side, t squared minus 1 over 2. So that means f of x can be expressed as x squared minus 1 over 2. 
Now, does our expression with the first method simplify to this? That's for you to find out and help me out. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus B I. And bye-bye.